Okay, welcome. I'm Dr. John Duyard, and this is our podcast on acne, wrinkles, and rashes. And uh, glad to have you all aboard. Uh, tonight, we're going to get into the details of the skin. Uh, I've got some exciting information I think I'll share with you that I think you're all going to love, and some really good, kind of easy to do at home dietary strategies to help um, understand and resolve any skin issues. Uh, upcoming podcasts have some really cool ones coming up, particularly the next one, which is on November 14th. I'm interviewing Dr. Rav Ifker, a uh, best-selling author of Sinus Survival. It's a book that's been out for a few years. A phenomenal book. Rav is a very good friend of mine, uh, founder of the American Holistic Medical Association, just a brilliant, brilliant doctor. And we're going to have a live interview with him about sinus survival. And as we go into the winter, I mean, what a perfect time for us to start thinking about how to protect our sinuses and protect and avoid colds and flu. So that's our next podcast coming up uh, here pretty soon. <clears throat> okay, well, welcome to this podcast on the skin. Interesting thing about the skin, you know, I'm always talking about the inner skin and the intestinal skin and the respiratory skin, how important that is. And, and it is important. In fact, perhaps most important. But there are factors that impact both the inner and the outer skin equally. And those factors are what I want to, I want to talk about tonight. Um, we know that stress is, plays a major role on your intestinal skin. But we don't really get the connection between stress on the outer skin and the facial skin as much. We don't really think about that, at least I don't think about that directly. But it turns out the science shows that it's actually really direct how the stress can impact our outer skin. And it can be environmental stress, like the sun obviously is you know, a major contributor to damage of the skin. Uh, pollutants in the environment have been shown to be major contributors to damaging of your skin. S you know, things like smoking clearly damage your outer skin. There's good science to support that. Your diet has an incredible role to play. We're going to talk about that in terms of the health and vitality and resiliency of your skin. And believe it or not, your emotions. There's good science that talks about how your emotions are directly linked to the health and quality of your skin. Um, for, for example, um, for example uh, things like meditation have been well documented, like in one study is shown to reduce dermatitis, one study was shown to reduce the, uh, the, uh, the duration of psoriasis, which is a really difficult chronic skin concern. So we know that stress mitigated by meditation can be very, very, you know, effective. So I know if you have a skin rash or you have hives or something and, or you have acne, you're like, okay, really meditate, that's going to help. But it's a, we're talking also tonight about long-term aging of your skin. You know, ex how do we antidote the tendency for us to have accelerated aging, which a lot of people feel like they're having, and all these environmental factors and dietary factors and stress-related factors, they all sort of stack up and create some real problems on the level of the skin, which is, uh, which is not a good thing. I'm gonna do one thing here. Okay. Um, so, so, you know, really learning how to meditate. And you know, when you think about it at the end of the day, I think we all agree that it's the stress in our life and this crazy mind of ours that plows through our intestinal skin, alters our microbiology, sends messages from our gut to our brain to tell the brain that everybody's, you know, under attack, life's an emergency, and that creates degenerative processes that take place throughout the body. You know, there, there's an accelerated amount of free radical damage as a result of stress. Free radicals tend to move through the lymphatic system. The lymphatic system, antioxidants like blueberries and strawberries and all the things I love to talk about that are red, that will dye your shirt when you eat them and spill stuff on yourself and it turns red, those are generally antioxidants. They work through your lymphatic system according to some new science and that lymphatic system is linked to what's called the skin associated lymph and underneath your skin you have a lymphatic layer that is an immune carrying layer, a protective layer, and a detoxifying layer, and a nutrient delivery system layer of your skin. That's all that. And if that skin is, um, if that lymphatic system is congested, then the skin can find its way out as hives or rashes or eczema, 
uh, it can become an exit ramp for impurities. So we have to look at, you know, always dialing it back to digestion. And I've talked many times about the how to reboot digestion. Uh, in my new book, Eat Wheat, I have a whole program step by step by step how to detoxify your lymph, how to reboot your digestion so you can digest hard to digest things again. Why is that important? Because your digestion is the same pathway as your detoxification system. And if you can't digest hard to digest things like wheat and dairy or other things that you once were able to, then there's a really good chance you're not able to detoxify the environmental toxins, which are linked to outer skin damage, uh, linked to being detoxified through your skin as an exit ramp. So it can impact you externally. It can impact you digestively into your intestinal skin, break that down into your lymphatic system, and then come out through your skin again as a rash or a hive. So these toxins in our environment have to be processed and they require a very good and strong digestive system. So that's really a critical piece of the puzzle, right? If we don't have the good digestive system. I'm going to try not to talk too much about that because I feel like I've said that and talked to you and gone through that process a lot. Although, um, please, if you want me to do that, when we get to the questions section, ask me and I'll, I'll dive into that uh, just a little bit. I have other stuff to cover and at the end, if I have time, I'll definitely go back and plug into that a little bit. Um, <clears throat> so we know that this stress can impact the, uh, the quality of the intestinal skin and create lymphatic congestion and dump impurities out and how important it is for us to be you know, good digesters and, um, and, and also really good detoxifiers. Now, some of the stuff that I found was, was really interesting, uh, sort of an ancient wisdom, modern science concept, which I thought was fascinating, <coughs> is that there actually is a little bit, not a ton, of vitamin E that naturally occurs on your skin. And vitamin E is a fat-soluble vitamin. It lives on your skin. And it protects your skin from damage from the sun. <clears throat> It protects your skin, uh, the oils on your skin that feed the microbes on your skin from oxidizing and being damaged. So it's a protection of that, protection from the radiation, protection from the environmental pollutants. It's a natural and powerful antioxidant from your skin. And they found in one study that when you're in the sun, that the vitamin E, which is a natural protectant of your skin, can be completely depleted from your skin in just... 30 minutes. In one study, it showed 65% of the vitamin E was depleted in just 30 minutes. And that was in like August in New Jersey. And then they said, well, what happens in October when it's a little less hot? And I think it was 50%, if I have an article, a blog coming out about this, I think it was 50% of the vitamin E was depleted in just 30 minutes in October. So it doesn't take that much sun to block the vitamin E, which is a natural protector of the vitamin D, which lives on your skin as well. The sun hits your skin, creates pre-vitamin D on your skin, and that vitamin D then takes about an hour to absorb through your skin. That vitamin D goes from your skin to your liver, from your liver to your kidneys, becomes active vitamin D, then it gets pushed into your bloodstream, and it then feeds with this vitamin D all the different cells and organs and organ systems of your body. Now vitamin D, I'll get back to vitamin E in a second, but vitamin D is a powerful antioxidant, a powerful rejuvenator for the skin, but the skin on the outside is the last organ to get the vitamin D after it goes from your liver to your kidney into the blood, starts feeding your liver and your other places and your other organs. And that, the last tissue to get the vitamin D is, in fact, your skin. And studies show that between the ages of 20 to 70, we lose about 75% of our ability to make vitamin D on the skin, to convert the UVB radiation into pre-vitamin D on your skin, absorb it into the blood and make vitamin D. We lose 75% of that. And that vitamin D is protected by vitamin E. And if that vitamin E gets washed off or blown out by the sun, by a little bit of sun, you don't have any vitamin E, we're in double indemnity. We're in big trouble, right? We don't have the vitamin D or the vitamin E to protect our skin. Our skin becomes extremely vulnerable and it starts to break down. And we'll talk about how that breaks down in just a minute, but, but let's talk about stay with the vitamin D and the vitamin E. Vitamin D, as we go into the winter, is very important that we all be aware of what the vitamin D levels are. Studies show that vitamin D is deficient in the Northern Hemisphere, about 87% of the population. 
Normal ranges of vitamin D is about, one, about 30 to about 120, depending on what study or what lab you're looking at, nanograms per milliliter. Most people in the northern hemisphere average 10, 20, or 30 nanograms per milliliter. Studies show that when vitamin D starts to go above 50, it changes its function from a vitamin to a hormone. Vitamin D has always looked and smelled and tasted like a hormone, but because when they first discovered it 50 years ago, it didn't have any hormonal activity because everybody was 10, 20, or 30, they just called it a vitamin. But when they went to the equator 10, 15 years ago and they took people's vitamin D down there, numbers were 60, 70, and 80. And when they looked at what their vitamin D was doing, massive change. All of a sudden, it was a secosteroid hormone, one of the most powerful hormones in your body, protected you from 16 different cancers, a driver of your immune system, a driver of blood sugar support, heart support, protected 2,000 genes from expressing negative traits, the mass, most important driver of immunity and mood, seasonal affective disorder, and the list goes on and on. Blood sugar regulation and everything. We're going to talk a minute about how blood sugar creates advanced glycation end products, which are the, one of them, and there are other things that do it as well, that are the absolute major damaging agents to your skin. You gotta know about these, what are called AGEs, and how to reverse those. And lack of vitamin D definitely sets you up for the, the, for the stabilizing of your blood sugar and the accumulation of uh, advanced glycation end products, AGEs, on your skin, right? So, so hang in there with me. So vitamin D is really important. And if you are 87% of the American population are deficient in vitamin D and the vitamin D is the last tissue, I mean your skin is the last tissue in the list of feeding vitamin D to all the tissues in the body, your skin gets it last, even though it came from the sun through your skin, into your blood, to your kidneys, to your liver, to your kidneys, to be active, it doesn't seem fair that the skin delivered it and it was the last one on the list to get it. But that's how it works. So we oftentimes have deficient levels of vitamin D. As we age and scrub our skin with soaps and things, we take all the oils off our skin. We put lotions and creams on that don't do anything to feed the natural microbiology and the natural oils of the skin. So it renders the skin unable to make the vitamin D. And in the winter time, when the sun gets low in the sky, or even in the summertime, when the sun is low in the sky in the morning and the afternoon, you don't get enough vitamin D unless it's midday summer sun rays. And without that adequate vitamin D, you know, you've got to be in the winter time in particular, you got to be eating the liver and the intestines of, you know, animals to get those fat soluble vitamins in your system or the brains of a woolly mammoth, which is probably difficult to find these days. And it wasn't that long ago, even cultures today eat the brains of lamb and, and the tongues of animals. But nowadays we're just right sort of down to just eating the muscle meat if we eat meat at all. And we don't get the vitamin D in the winter. So we have to think about making sure you supplement. I'm a big fan of trying to get your numbers between 50 and 80 nanograms per milliliter. There's incredibly good science to do that. Get the activation of the vitamin D as a secosteroid hormone and, 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 and reap the benefits of that, particularly in the winter time for immunity and mood stability and energy and radiant skin. Um, so that said, Let's make sure that's happening. Get your blood levels checked. This is not a bad time of year to do it before this winter really kicks in. This is the highest of the high right now, the end of the summer, where your vitamin D should be at the highest level of the high. And most people need about 5,000 international units of vitamin D a day to get their numbers between 50 to 80 nanograms per milliliter. And if you decide to do 5,000 now, then you know, maybe in March, test it again, make sure that you're in that zone, 50 to 80, and then you know your winter dose, and that's really, really important. I'm a big fan of using um, sheep lanolin versus fish oil vitamin D. It's much easier to digest and much um, more economical, and nobody has to die. And um, it's also uh, something that I've used clinically in my practice. We have one called, uh, what's it called, uh, Liquid Sun and I've used the other versions of vitamin D and we, I just couldn't get people's numbers up to the 50 and above zone. So I really love that for that reason. Now, back to the vitamin E, right? So the sun knocks out your vitamin E and now you're, now you're vulnerable to the damage of your skin, no vitamin D or vitamin E to protect your skin. What 
is really amazing tying the ancient wisdom of modern science was in Ayurvedic medicine, you all know, that people would do Ayurvedic massage you know, every day of their life. They would start their day with an oil massage. They'd put oil in their mouth and swish it, oil in their ears and their nose, I mean, oil went everywhere, right? But it turns out that vitamin, uh, that sesame oil, which is the base oil in all of our massage oils, Ayurvedic with our lymph oil or our tridoshic oil, all of those oils, the base oil is sesame. And guess what sesame oil is loaded with? Vitamin E. One cup of vitamin E internally gives you 15% of the RDA. Well, when they did this study and they saw that vitamin E was depleted by the sun in a short order, they said, well, let's see how to replace that vitamin E. And they measured the difference between taking it internally or putting it directly on your skin. And they found that putting it directly on your skin was a much better delivery system than trying to take the vitamin E internally, which just so happens to be exactly what the Ayurvedic wisdom was, was to put sesame oil on your skin every single day. And generally, India was hot, a lot of sun, and putting oil on your skin replaced the vitamin E that the sun would knock out in just 30 minutes and then therefore provide an I asked him to buy batteries and I told him we were low. How much did they lose me? Um, well, they're still here in you. Well, when did you lose them? I don't know. I don't know. That, that should be working. That better? Okay, you can hear me now. Okay, guys, I'm so sorry. I don't know where you lost me all. I know the, the recording uh, on the phone should have it, so we'll have it there so we won't lose everything. But the, the point in the discussion that we had... Um, um, let me get rid of this. Okay. Um, oops. Okay. Um, so the, 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 the point of that is that vitamin E, in a nutshell, just to a little recap, I don't know how much you lost of me, but the, uh, the vitamin E, uh, e protects your skin. It's damaged by the sun. You lose the vitamin E from the sun. That makes your skin more vulnerable to uh, the damage of the vitamin D, which is very, very important, and how important it is to get your vitamin D levels up. Vitamin E 
um, uh, actually has been shown to be uh, delivered through the skin better than delivered through the mouth. And of course, Ayurveda has been delivering sesame oil massage, which is loaded with vitamin E, on the skin for thousands upon thousands of years. And how important that is for the body to support uh, adequate uh, vitamin E levels through the skin. The oil on your skin also puts a, has a dampening effect on the sensory nervous system. The sensory nervous system where we feel everything um, is processed not only through our senses but all through, through our skin. And when you put oil on your skin, you calm the central nervous system down to a certain extent. And when you uh, calm the central nervous system down, um, you create a, a dampening effect. And we know that stress, overwhelming sensory input stress, impacts the effect and the health and the vitality of your skin. Thus, the meditation helps, but oil massage is very critical, not only for the health of the skin, to feed the microbiome on your skin, to dampen the sensory nervous system on the skin, for the dials down all the emergency stress that's on the skin and how important, how important that is. So that's going to be a really valuable tool for you is to think about you know, regular oil massage. When you do the oil massage, um, it's really important to do it um, with a little bit of attention. There's good science to show that when you put oil on your skin, rub your own skin in a loving, kind, attentive, mindful way, it increases a hormone called oxytocin. Oxytocin has been linked to health and longevity on many, many studies. And when you actually do a massage with a level of awareness, you actually increase that oxytocin. I know for years I would say, you know, I, I, my thing was to, you know, not ask folks to do a traditional Ayurvedic massage every single day, which is put down a towel, you know, heat up the oil, do a whole oil massage on your skin where you're losing a lot of oil and getting very oily. It's wonderful to do that like on the weekends, but if you gotta get to work, you got things to do. I mean, who has time for that? So if you put the oil in the shower and you get in the shower, wash yourself up, put a little oil on your skin, put a little bit of oil on there and you get that damping effect, you feed your microbe effect, but you can also, while you're in there, do it with a little bit of attention and really rub, your, rub yourself and massage yourself with a, a little bit of awareness to the extent that you have time to do it. Um, you know, Ayurveda is really big on massaging the head in a vigorous way. Now we have new science that shows that there's little veins that pop through your skull of your head that are linked to the veins that draw, that take the waste out of your brain via the lymphatic vessels that were recently discovered in the brain that wrap around the venous system in the sagittal sinus of your brain called the, called the glymphatic system. That takes the cerebral spinal fluid that sort of washes through your brain into these lymphatics and takes them out of your body. And when you massage your head vigorously like a big Ayurvedic thing, you definitely increase the cerebral spinal fluid flow. You definitely increase the cervical lymph flow because you're activating circulation on the outside as well as the inside because those veins pop through and they're all connected. By increasing stimulation here, those veins can drain better and get the waste to drain on the outside of your head and not only and exclusively through the inside of your head. So that's a pretty cool little aside. But again, if your brain is not draining the lymph the way it should, then you're talking about your whole head, not just your skin, which reflects that, but your brain, your eyes, your clarity, your, 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 your complexion, all of that is linked to how well your brain and your central nervous system is draining. Because if you're not draining well, you know, people can start to feel like brain fog, they can get like twitches in their eyes, they, their skin can become lackluster, they can get saggy, because the whole nutrition in and waste out thing is congested. And if the central nervous system, which has inside of it cerebral spinal fluid, and if that fluid isn't really moving freely the way it is, the way it should, if that fluid is not moving the way it should, then you're not going to move that fluid into the brain, which sort of washes from the deep center part of the brain to the outside of the brain and is washed out through these cerebral spinal fluid through these lymphatic vessels. Yoga will increase the flow of that cerebral spinal fluid. 
which will allow the brain to drain and wash itself better. It's like a brain wash. Very powerful. So in the story of number four, the sun salutation, which is one of my favorites, when you do deep breathing, which has been shown to increase cerebral spinal fluid, will allow the brain to wash better. And I promise you, when your brain is washing those lymphs, it directly supports the clarity and complexion and brightness in your face. There's science that shows that the lymphs in your nose and the lymphs in the cervical side are where all that drains. And if these lymphs and these lymphs are congested, then it pushes out through the skin-associated lymph and your face becomes congested. So it's very important as we age and our spine gets stiffer to keep that elasticity. And studies show that that deep nasal breathing, stuff I talk about with my Ayurvedic exercise and nasal breathing techniques, has been shown to increase cerebral spinal fluid and the brain wash effect. Um, um, yoga has been shown to do the exact same thing. Meditation, which increases parasympathetic versus sympathetic fight or flight stress, has been shown to do the exact same thing. So all these tools, which we know also have science to show supports healthy and vital skin, does it on, in one way through the this movement of the cerebral spinal fluid, which is basically central nervous system lymph. And that central nervous system lymph gets absorbed into your bigger systemic lymphatic system and processed out of your body. So pretty cool stuff. So anyway, massaging your head, really, really important. Even if it's in the shower, make sure you get a really good head massage and try to do it with a little bit of love and a little bit of affection on your skin uh, in regular daily Ayurvedic massage. With sesame oil, we'll put the vitamin E back on your skin, which turned out to be, from the science, the best way to replenish that vitamin E, which is uh, really, really important, I think. And fascinating, right, that they knew that this that to do the sesame oil massage, not olive oil massage or any other type of oil, it was always sesame oil that they talked about. And sesame, uh, you can always remember sesame has vitamin E in it because it ends with an E, sesame. That's how you remember that it has vitamin E, and it does. So that's how you know that's the one oil to know to do that. Now, um, other studies that show that you can mitigate stress um, uh, with, with Ayurveda, there was a study done with ashwagandha, one of the Ayurveda's classic adaptogenic herbs, and amalaki, another antioxidant herb, when they put the two together, it actually blocked the enzymes that break down collagen, which gives us the elasticity of our skin by 54%, and it prevented the breakdown of hyaluronic acid, sort of a hydrator for your skin, a plumping agent for your skin by 84%. So these are really cool herbs as we go into the winter because amalaki is loaded with vitamin C, another antioxidant, uh, that supports healthy skin and ashwagandha, a, a winter fall harvested adaptogen that protects you from stress uh, and protects and supports the health of your skin according to some pretty cool science, which I thought was pretty, pretty interesting. Perhaps the, the most important piece of the skin puzzle is a damaging process called advanced glycation end products. And glycation is when the skin um, um, is damaged by a process of glycation. And that's when there's sugars in your blood damage the, uh, or combine or link or hook up with the um, proteins in your blood. And they have a particular affinity for collagen and elastin, two of the things that make our skin youthful. So if you have a little bit of a higher level of blood sugar, um, then that sugar can glycate in your skin and cause damaging uh, uh, advanced glycation end products. And what they have found with these AGEs, these glycation end products, is that they're sort of the smoking gun for many, many degenerative processes. They found them at the sites of Alzheimer's, sites of arthritis, sites of cancer, sites of any type of degenerative inflammatory conditions. They found these, these advanced glycation end products there. So it, it's important in, in the science that shows the link between AGEs, these glycation end products, and the damage of your skin and the accelerated aging of your skin is, is overwhelming. There is so much science there 
to support that. So the number one thing that we can do, sun will, will increase the, the production of AGEs. Environmental toxins will do it. So if we have the sun and the environmental toxins that we can't get rid of, and then we have higher levels of blood sugar, which are epidemic in our time, even a little bit high, then we're gonna get an accelerated uh, production of glycation. Now there's a really cool test. You can buy a, uh, a test at Walgreens or at Walmart for very cheap, for like $9 at Walmart, called the hemoglobin A1C test. And the hemoglobin A1C test is a measure of glycation. And what they do is they figure, they take a picture of your blood and they look at your blood and they measure how many of your hemoglobin molecules, which are protein, glycate with sugar, stick together with sugar. And that clumps your blood, by the way, makes these molecules super big and congestive as they try to circulate into the little tiny you know, capillaries and into the intercellular spaces and we absorb back into lymph. They don't break up, they congest and they cause lymphatic congestion related issues, which we've talked about a ton. So this glycation is really important. So if you get a, a, a hemoglobin A1C test on your annual, you always should get that test, by the way, because it measures not only a three-month average of your blood sugar, which is a good number to know, it also measures how much glycation is taking place in your body. And the highest level you really want to see is what's called 5.6% of your hemoglobin molecules are glycated. So anything under 5.6% is not pre-diabetic. But we really like to see those numbers between 4.8 and 5.2. That's where you really want to be. And I think it's a great thing to do, you know, buy the test from Walmart for $9. You stick, you know, your finger, get a test, get a look at it, and then you go on a really strict diet to get those numbers down. And you begin to see that not only is your blood sugar coming down, but your glycation, which is the risk of damage, the protection of your skin, the aging process of your skin is also supported directly, which I think is really, really cool, okay? So that's the hemoglobin A1C test. You wanna make sure that's between 4.8 and 5.4. Uh, uh, you can get those locally. We have home tests for that for vitamin D as well, but they're also you know, locally available and your doctor can always do an A1C test for you as well, sort of the classic test for blood sugar. Very, very important. Now, talking about blood sugar, because blood sugar is clearly a damaging agent for your skin because of the AGEs. So you really wanna look at how to keep your blood sugar levels low. I'm also a big fan of checking your regular blood sugar first thing in the morning and making sure your numbers stay in the 80s, okay? 80s, 80 milligrams per deciliter first thing in the morning is where you wanna be. Um, if you start slipping into the 90s, that extra blood sugar puts you at risk for Alzheimer's and glycation and accelerated aging of your skin. And that's not a good thing. So you want to always make sure your blood sugar levels are low. Um, and, and I wrote a whole ebook called Blood Sugar for Health and Longevity. It's a free 50 page ebook, takes you step by step by step to know and make sure your blood sugar levels stay low and protect you from the advanced glycation end product issues that can take place. Um, some kind of cool things that can happen that you can use to, to bring your, your, uh, your advanced glycation end product levels down are things that we know about. Uh, Ayurvedically, turmeric has been shown to be a, a reversing agent for advanced glycation end products. That's something that I highly recommend cooking with, uh, you're taking as a supplement. Uh, when you cook with it, you know, uh, try to mix about 16 parts turmeric to one part black pepper and you can put it in your food. That's exactly what our turmeric plus formula is. And that formula, putting those two together, has been shown to increase the, uh, has been shown to increase the uh, absorption rate of turmeric by like 2000%, which is pretty cool. Uh, so you can take either the turmeric plus supplement or you can put it and cook with it, which is very important. Amalaki, again, a vitamin C agent. In the wintertime, you know, this, the vitamin C is harvested in a big surge in the fall. All the apples and oranges and, you know, all these things are sort of late fall, you know, you know rich fruits that have a lot of vitamin C. And then we go into a vitamin C drought from a nature's harvest perspective. So this is the time of year to amp up your vitamin C for sure, whether it be a vitamin C supplement or more vitamin C rich fruits or taking more amalaki in your diet, 
but definitely this is vitamin C season and amping that up, we know it links to immunity, we know it helps protect you from colds and flus, and of course we're going into cold and flu season, so it sort of makes perfect sense, right, to get your vitamin C levels up, it's what nature is trying to harvest right now with all the fruits that are being harvested that are loaded with vitamin C. So again, pretty cool plan how nature kind of pulled this off to make sure we amp that up right now, uh, which is important. Trifla. Um, is there another herb, three citrus fruits, has an amalak unit, also been shown to help support uh, the uh, lowering of blood sugar, supporting of liver function, which lowers blood sugar, which lowers AGE uh, glycation and product production, which is pretty cool. And that is a good scrub for your intestinal skin. And at the end of the winter time, or the end of the summertime, before we go into winter, there's an accumulation of heat in our body. And that heat wants to get out. You know, the leaves get hot, the trees get hot, the, leaf, every, the heat starts to rise in the trees, and then it gets heat goes into the leaves, the leaves turn red, beautiful color, they dry out and they fall off. And the leaves get to get rid of their leaves, the trees get to get rid of their leaves and detox, right? We don't have that. We don't like shed our skin like a snake or leaves like a tree. We have foods that naturally support what's called purgation, the downward moving of waste out of our body this time of the year. Apples, if you ate enough of them, if one apple tree is loaded with apples, you'll find that you eat enough, you'll start having a looser bowel movement and a purgation effect. A baby, when it gets a fever, also gets loose bowel movements, and the loose bowel movements are the body's way to purgate the heat out of the body. So this time of the year, our bodies are trying to purgate with the harvest of fruits abundantly, get that heat out of our body so we can get all that heat and detoxification taking place. Really great time for you to think about doing a seasonal cleanse, transitional cleanse from summer into winter, whether it be our free short home cleanse, uh, which is just a quick four-day thing that anybody can do. It's really super simple. You take four days to take a little ghee in the morning, a no-fat diet, and a little detox or a little laxative effect at the last day, and you're done. I mean, it's really that simple. There's a free ebook you can download to tell you step-by-step -step how to do that. Uh, Women's World Magazine did a feature on that short home cleanse. They downloaded the ebook. People lost 9 to 11 pounds in the four days on average. They did a feature because it was so easy and so effective. And it's a great get rid of heat at the end of the summer type of a cleanse. <clears throat> we also have our bigger, more, uh, more comprehensive Colorado cleanse, which is coming up in the middle of October. And, um, and I think that the last day to sign up for that, for the early bird special to get all the discounts, I think it's tomorrow or something. I'm not exactly sure, but it's very soon. Go on my website, you'll see when it ends. But that's the Colorado Cleanse, which is a two-week digestive reboot, lymphatic cleanse, and detoxification of the toxins that find their way into your fat, into your brain, and into your lymphatic tissues. So that's our, our Colorado Cleanse. We do it twice a year together as a group. You can do it whenever you want on your own, no doubt. But twice a year we do it as a group. There's emails and conference calls and question and answer sessions that I give everybody. And you get emails every morning to guide you through the process. And that's something to think about as well. I always say if you're going to do a detox, and this is the time you're going to do it, make sure there's a digestive reset component. Make sure there's a lymphatic detox component. And make sure then after you reset digestion, your limbs are open, then you detoxify the body. Because the body took the toxin, stuck it into your fat cells, which can find their way into your skin and create real problems. So you always want to make sure that the detox is done, uh, the reset of digestion and lymphatic channels are open before you go pulling the yuck out of the fat cells. That's really critically, really critically important as well. Um, things that we know that are really good for um, reversing the advanced glycation end products, some really cool things like ginger in your diet, ginger tea, cinnamon in your diet, cinnamon tea, cinnamon toasts, Cinnamon is really good. Cloves, marjoram, rosemary, tarragon. So these are spices that we don't use a lot anymore. In our day, the spices are really important, and the science is showing more and more that these spices are critically important for our health and, and well-being at a subtle but profound level. Ginger, cinnamon, cloves, marjoram, rosemary, and tarragon, all spices have been shown to block the advanced glycation end product pr production and support healthy skin. Other things like foods that you know about that are really good to block these AGEs, like flavonoids that you'll find in red grapes, 
and blueberries, uh, red cabbage and strawberries. Anything red generally has flavonoids in it, which are really good for reducing the AGEs. Quercetin, like you found in onions and apple skins. Again, apples, apples, apples. This time of year, you know, make sure you get them. Berries and broccoli are loaded with quercetin, really good for allergies. The quercetin we have in our, in our Alarest product, which is all about giving you these big dose of vitamin C and flavonoids, you know, around the seasonal changes, spring and fall, when allergies are up, when we need more of that vitamin C. Um, green tea and cacao have been shown to actually reduce the advanced glycation end products. Carotenes, carrots, uh, sweet peppers, the different colored peppers are important. Oranges loaded with uh, carotenoids, carotenoids, which are very powerfully uh, free radical scavenging and also lower the AGEs. Lycopene and tomatoes. And then of course, um, the, the uh, fish oils, which are very important because fish oils do a lot of things. They, studies have shown that the fish oils, when you take it internally, actually protect your skin from UV radiation, or another fat-soluble nutrient to protect your skin. Your skin is made by phospholipid layers, which are basically uh, oil. That's why you don't, the water, when you get pumped in a pool, doesn't get through your tissues because you've got an oil layer on your skin. That's why your hands plump up because there's not as much oil and the hands will start to prune up because you're taking on more water than the rest of your body where it has more oil on the skin. Um, so, so EPA and DHA, omega-3 essential fatty acids, vegetarian oils, you know, like all of your chia seeds and flax seeds and uh, are all very, very good. They have uh, not necessarily the EPA and the DHA, but they have alpha little egg acid, which can convert into the, into the omega-3s, the EPA, and so give you um, the production in a small amount. Those oils probably work in a different way than the fish oils work because they convert in, into the EPA in, in very, very small quantities. But, the, um, but the, um, the fish oils are powerful and they work really well. They've been shown to support and help us handle stress. We know that in the winter time, the cold water fish from Alaska and the Arctic, they swim out of the super cold water down to the coastal regions on both sides of our coast here in the States. And those cold water fish are harvested and caught and they become the fish that we eat in the winter time. In the summertime, they go back north and we have warm water fish. We don't get as many oils because those fish have a lot of oils to protect them from the cold. So nature again made sure we got these oils from the fish. We get oils from the olives that are harvested in the fall as well. Good quality olive oil is critical for your skin. You always wonder why, why people in Europe will drink, eat a lot of olive oil, have this beautiful radiant skin. Those olive oil is very, very effective for your skin, but it has to be pure olive oil. It's very difficult today in Europe. They've had some blights where olive oil was, the trees were, were, were infected. So there was one study recently showed that 70 to 80 percent of all the olive oil has been diluted by some other oil um, because it's too expensive for them to put pure olive oil in the bottle. So that's really, really important. Um, I actually use a company that uh, I've talked about on my website called Fandango, which is an olive oil company on the West Coast. And they have a mill that they actually drive along when they take the grapes, uh, uh, the olives, they take them right off the vine and they put them right in the mill and they literally mill them within seconds of it being harvested. Most big commercial companies will take the olives, right? and take it and put it in a truck and ship it for hours or even days before it actually finds its way into the mill and then becomes pressed. And during that time, those oils become rancid. So their strategy is the quicker it can be pressed into an oil, the quicker it's gonna be, all is gonna be preserved. And so all organic company phenomenal called Fandango, you can look at their website and learn more about them. But that's the one that we use and we get because I know them personally and I know it's the purest thing in this day and age. It's tricky. You can't find, I haven't been able to find a really good quality, quality olive oil that I trust in the health food stores. Uh, you, if you want to look there, you got to make sure that there's a press date and a harvest date on the bottle. And that's important. If you don't have that, 
you know, it's probably old, possibly they looted and rancid. It was really sad to see that there was, in this study, that so many of the olive oils that they tested were actually diluted with something else. So anyway, olive oil, very important. Again, as we go into the winter, olive oil, coconut oil, fish oils are really important. We actually just, uh, just um, launched a, a new product um, called, um, called Mini Omega, which basically is very, very small capsules that actually absorb and deliver the EPA and DHA three times as power as potent as if you took like a teaspoon of the of the actual fish oil. So it's um, I, I love this product. You don't need to take very much of it, but it actually delivers it directly into the blood, into the in, through the intestinal tract, into the blood, into the skin, into the brain, into your heart, and um, and that's something that you can look at. Uh, oils, fish oils, very very important. Um, um, uh, and what else do we have here about the skin? The other thing about this, the, the skin that I think is, you know, really important, you know, in addition to, um, you know, stress and its impact on the microbiology is really, really important. And I think that, that one of the things we don't think about when we eat our food is the, the ability to take time and relax and eat our food so we can digest it in a complete way. It's also important not to overcook your food, not to take, take eat your food that's been cooked in, 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 to the point where it's been burned because that becomes a accelerator for advanced glycation and products as well. So, you know, steamed and boiled versus fried, you know, eat uh, foods that have not been cooked or broiled that have any char on it are very, very important as well for your skin as well. There are hormonal aspects as well to your skin. Uh, I wrote an article once called It Might Not Be Hormonal, and women oftentimes get acne around their chin prior to their menstrual cycle or during their menstrual cycle. There are, um, uh, there's a lymphatic detoxification that takes place through lymphatic vessels that drain the reproductive system that pre-detoxifies the body prior to the menstrual cycle. And uh, if you find yourself bloating, breasts getting tender or swollen, breaking out, holding on to water prior to your cycle, you probably have a lymphatic congestive issue that is actually pushing hormones, but possibly even out through your skin. So look at things to help decongest your lymphatic system. The lymph agents that we use are red cherries and berries and, and uh, cranberries and beets and anything that, like I said, would dye your skin are foods that are very, very important for that and critically important for that. Your fish oils and your oils in your diet will also support lymphatic support. Your greens, which are harvested now in a big way, are natural lymphatic movers. Hydration is a natural lymphatic mover, it's making sure you stay hydrated. Exercise and movement may be critically important, and the more you breathe through your nose, you get the cerebrospinal fluid flow that helps push the fluid into your brain, washes your brain into these limbs, and keeps this whole thing moving. It's not super complicated when you look at the logic of how the body is designed, but at the same time, it's like infinitely complex. Um, and then herbs that we use to help decongest the lymph, like mangista, is an herb that I use for women with premenstrual lymphatic-related skin issues and acne for years and years and years. Powerful medicine for, um, for decongesting that. So you take the mangista one, three times a day during your cycle, a couple of weeks before the cycle, take a little bit more, like maybe two, three times a day. You can do that. You can also take our new lymphatic cleanse product, which is a scrub for the lymphatic collecting ducts on your skin and the lymph nodes, there's about 700 of them in your body that are loaded with white blood cells. And all the yucky stuff goes into these nodes and gets processed, but those nodes can swell and become congested and shut down, slow down the lymphatic drainage and, and then push toxins out through the skin and create problems. So the, the lymph cleanse is a scrub for those lymph nodes and the collecting ducts of the, of the intestinal tract. So that's important as well. And then, you know, generally when, when, when we think about skin herbs in Ayurveda, there's a handful of them. Uh, neem is maybe, it's called the queen of the skin. And in Ayurveda, they use it from spring all the way to late fall. And the reason what it does is that it's neem is a natural antiseptic, a natural uh, um, 
you know, scrub for the bad bacteria in your intestinal tract, supports the environment of your intestinal skin, and allows good microbes to proliferate. You could almost say that neem is the original probiotic prebiotic because it supported the health of the skin. And you would start, it's, the leaves start coming out in the spring and they would eat that, drink that as a tea for the entire, for the entire spring and summer to support healthy, good microbes. Wow, there's lots of other bugs trying to you know, compete for that real estate inside your intestinal tract. The neem keeps the good guys' levels up and the bad levels down. I love neem for intestinal health and integrity. Amalaki repairs and supports the intestinal skin as well as the outer skin. Another herb called Grammy Brain or, or Centella Asiatica has been shown to support mental clarity and function, but also it's been shown to support the health integrity of the skin. It's in many skincare products now. It's in our skincare line that we use and that we use as well. And the way we formulated my skincare line many, many years ago was very, very simple. I call it medicines to restore the function of your skin. We took the, the natural moisturizing factor of your skin and we soaked that squalene from olives. It's olive squalene. The squalene is only made in three places that we know of, olives, sharks, and human skin. We took that squalene and then put herbalized herbs that were really nourishing and lubricating and moisturizing and reparative for the skin. And we soaked those, uh, that, those herbs in the squalene for two weeks and created an infusion, drained it, and then you have this amazing kind of, kind of kind of uh, impregnated uh, natural moisturizing factor of your own skin with these moisturizing, rejuvenative, wrinkle cure curing type herbs that we created these different formulas. And that's sort of the basic theme of the product. There's a few other products as well that have other, other really cool strategies as well, but, but that's the concept. Very simple, no preservatives, no chemicals, no, no additives, just pure 100% active material. Most skincare products have water in them, which means you have to put preservatives in them. Now you're putting preservatives on your skin, your skin won't absorb it. And I was like, you know, we just use the 100% active material and you put that, you add the water when you're using it because we don't put any water in the bottle. So we're actually selling the actual concentrated material. And that's what I've been using those products for. Well, we, we, we started that company, that, that line and formulated that uh, in 1998. So it's been a long time. And this stuff's just, I love it. It's amazing stuff. Um, so look at that as well as possible to look at something that will actually repair and support the health of your skin. Um, make sure you're, if there's a hormonal piece, you're doing lymphatic drainage around that area. Neem, amalanki, turmeric, again, phenomenal for the, for the AGEs, phenomenal for the health of the skin. Those are really important. The Brummi, the Centella Asiatica, those four, literally I take every day. Uh, the fish oils, I think, are really critically important, particularly as we go into the winter. Uh, your vitamin D levels, you want to stay up. The sesame oil massage on your skin to make sure your vitamin E stays there. What a cool concept that is to protect your skin as well. And then make sure your blood sugar stays stable, um, which is critically important. And there's a whole ebook about how to do that as well. Um, so let me jump in here, see if I can answer any questions here for you guys. Um, um, so here's a couple of questions, and if you have any questions now, you can push star two on your phone, and I'll take your questions. Um, please comment on the the uh, uh, the effect the effect uh, the, uh, the effectiveness of Conso One for wrinkles. Does it work? You know what? I don't know. I don't know what that is. I don't. I've never used it, so I'm not really sure. So I'm so sorry. I can't answer that. I wonder um, why my skin has a texture of tissue paper, uh, menopausal, and in my last year, my skin has become very uh, thin. I have excellent diet. I think the last two or more years, I was a raw vegetarian when I felt fantastic in every way, except for what happened to my skin. I have started uh, to include a little animal protein and use natural chemical-free products. I exercise, enjoy a joyous person. Please help. Uh, I have itchy bumps on my scalp in dandruff, could this be fungal? Um, you know, when you go into menopause, what can happen is you have, you have a couple of things that happen. Um, if the stress levels are high, progesterone and testosterone can actually be, um, can actually be you know, depleted 
and that can leave you with an unopposed level of estrogen. And that higher level of estrogen can, can be perceived as an imbalance in your hormones. And that can cause a whole host of hormonal related imbalances. And so one of the things that I always say to do is make sure you're feeding yourself with really good quality oils, fish oils, coconut oil, ghee, make sure those are available. If you're protein deficient, not getting enough protein, that has to do to a certain extent with the structure of your skin as well, which is very, very important. So, you know, I have an ebook called the Protein, Are You Protein Deficient ebook. If you go to my ebooks, they're free. You can look about that and go through the protocol and see if there's a possible protein deficiency that could be causing this, you know, and then go through the protocol of the lymphatic system and make sure that's not causing it as well. Um, you know, when you have that, that thin skin, you know, we really just think this is sort of like the leaves on the trees. Are they getting nourished in the way that they could? And I would look at essential fatty acids. I would look at lymphatic drainage. I'd look at protein support and make sure your digestion is strong enough to deliver those. And I would scrub that in detail. Wrinkles and drooping eyes. How can I reverse that? Get back to the glow. You know, one of the things I talked about, I didn't talk about, two more things. We have an Ayurvedic test on our website called the skin body type test. You can see if your skin is vata pit or a cop, it's a cool test you can take, it's free, and find out what your skin type is. And you'll get a sense of what your skin, and you can support your skin based on the type that you have. You know, vata skin, very, very thin and delicate. Pitta skin, not as thin, but way photosensitive to spots and things like that. Kapha skin, very thick. Wrinkles, much less, but it's also vulnerable to congestion. You can get sort of congested underneath the skin, and you can look at that as well. Um, one of the things Ayurveda talks about a lot when it comes to skin health is ojas. Ojas is a, is a glowing uh, ingredient in Ayurveda. It makes your skin glow and that radiance I think this question is asking about. Um, ojas comes from, as the last uh, product of a 30-day digestive cycle. So in Ayurveda, the digestion takes 30 days for it to complete. And the final product is ojas, which gives you immunity and radiance and energy and vitality. And there are foods that increase ojas. And those foods we think of maybe in, our, you know, in, in the West as fattening foods. But this is the time of the year to eat fattening foods. The bear are gorging on fattening foods, so get a little winter insulation to protect yourself from vata, from the stress of the winter. And those are ghee coconut oil uh, or coconuts, butter, uh, milk, it could be coconut or, or even almond milk, almonds, dates, um, cardamom. And we have a product called Ojas Nightly Tonic that you take a teaspoon, mix it in some warm milk and drink that a couple times a day to rebuild your Ojas, which is a powerful agent to uh, support and rebuild your Ojas as well. But the Ojas comes from not only foods that you eat, but taking the stress out of the equation, you know, going into nature and feeling the peace and calm in the forest is an ojas building experience um, and, and something that, you know, is very important for us to plug back into this nature deficiency disorder a lot of us have, taking time to go into nature, taking time to be still, to be what Ayurveda calls more sattvic. And the more sattvic, relaxed and calm and giving and joyful and not stressed and moving 90 miles an hour you are, the more ojas you build and the more ojas you build, it literally feeds your skin, which is really, really important. Um, another question, are there anything that can be done for vis visible veins on the forehead? I see mine pulsing. Is there anything we could do for deep frown lines? You know, in Ayurveda, there's another uh, supplement one ours is called uh, lymph vein HP, which comes from the pith of the orange. And when I was in India years ago, we used to grind the pith of the orange into dry it out and make a powder of it. We use it for blood pressure and circulatory issues. Well, now we have science to show that that chemical is called diosmin, which actually increases microcirculation for venous and lymphatic drainage. So if you ever, if there's any venous-related issues or lymphatic-related issues, things like cellulite and sluggish circulation. Uh, that are you know through the legs or the arms that are next to the veins, then the diosmin would be a way to go. So either grind up the pith of your pomegranates or your mangoes or your oranges, or take a look at the the, uh, the research that I've written about on the uh, lymph vein HP product. That'd be a place that I would go. Of course, look at lymphatic flow um, as well. And uh, let me check and see if there's any questions here. 
Um, uh, if anybody is, has a question, just push star two if there's any questions. And then um, let me go here. And um, hang on one second. So um, another question here, I was wondering with rashes due to tropical, tropical poison, like poison ivy, does the poison itself have the pitta qualities or does it just act as a catalyst to bring the inner heat? These are, you know, these are called contact dermatitis issues where these are poisons that irritate the skin and then it creates a inflammatory reaction to your skin. And depending on how efficient your skin is of getting the blood in and the lymph out and processing these poisons is going to determine how quickly you react. Pitta body types tend to be way more sensitive, photosensitive to these kinds of concerns. So those are the ones who are more sensitive to, to the sun, but also sensitive to these contact dermatitis or poison. So their skin is very, very active in pitta people. Therefore, they're more vulnerable to rashes and things like that. Neem, Amalaki, Brahmi, Centella Asiatica. These are all cooling herbs, really good for pitta. Skin is a pitta organ. So in the summertime, we all want to look at that. But depending on your constitution, that might be something you use constitutionally as well. My husband has worn a very light skin. Now he's getting darker, uh, has very dark cheeks, melasma, and dark patches on the face. Um, is it hormones, insulin resistance, or a liver or adrenals? You know, um, when you look at melasma type issues, you're looking at sometimes a genetic predisposition. Sometimes you're looking at you know, congestion of the lymphatics that push impurities out through the skin. And in Ayurveda, the herb called mangista is actually been used indicated for, you know, discolorations of the skin. That's what that herb was classically and traditionally used for. So that would be, you know, an indicator that getting that lymphatic system to move again and looking for ways to do that with either the lymph cleanse to scrub the nose, the, 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 uh, the uh, mangista to help get good circulation in the body, Vitamin D is so critical for the skin as well, making sure those numbers are optimized. Those are the three things that I would look at, you know, right away. And then topically on the skin, you know, one of the things that, that is really kind of cool to do, since the vitamin D is the last organ to get the vitamin D, the skin is, then putting a couple of drops of the vitamin D right into your, right into your uh, skincare product and rub it on like all of my skincare products have vitamin D in it because we lack the vitamin D on our skin so much. We also lack vitamin E and that's where the sesame oil massage comes in as well. Um, so those two vitamins for your skin are, are actually critically important. Some of our products have vitamin E and vitamin A, which is a natural moisturizer for your skin as well. So those fast soluble vitamins, they belong on your skin. When our skin gets dried out, we lose that. And as we age, we lose it rapidly, externally and internally. And that's why we always talk about the health integrity of the internal skin, because the skin on your on your in your chest tract is as big as a tennis court, and really functional as a kid. But as we age, we lose function of that tennis court, and it becomes we have to do a whole lot more with less, get the nutrition in, and get the waste out with less square footage of intestinal skin, which is harder when we age. Um, um, I'm in my 60s, but have always looked young for my age. My skin is aging very quickly, and now I'm very concerned. I have hormonal tests and serious hair loss. I've been tested, uh, and levels of intestine were quite low, but no one will give me hormone replacement. Do you have any suggestions for that? Um, I don't. Yeah, so, so when you're looking at stress-related hormonal deficiencies, progesterone and testosterone are the ones that usually are depleted. So looking at uh, a supplement that would increase your naturally progesterone, like a wild yam uh, supplement is a great strategy to use a precursor for your progesterone. Uh, but we have one called Hormone Free, which has got all the precursors for the hormones to bring those back, which is, which is our menopausal supplement. So those are things to, to look at to, to bring that vitamin D is a hormone that gives you the ability to make more hormones with it. So that's important as well. Um, I moved from Indiana to Texas. My skin has been the same since. Uh, I used to have glowing skin. Now I have facial breakouts. Uh, also, I, I get more bruises, uh, mosquito bites, leave scars. You know, when you, uh, uh, when you move from one environment to another, a lot of times there's pollutants in the air 
Indiana to Texas, sounds like there might be more pollutants in the air. I don't know for sure, but we have to protect our skin from pollutants internally and externally. And things you can do to protect your skin, vitamin D, number one. Spirulina, wonderful way to give you, you know, natural vitamin A uh, uh, precursors. Um, um, iodine, uh, we have a product called Iodine HP, which is 12 milligrams of iodine, seven, uh, six and six of iodine and iodide. And you take one of those a week is enough to give your skin the protection that you need, which is very important from getting exposed to a lot of the toxic chemicals in the environment. Um, what else? Uh, and then the other things you're talking about, like the neem and the, and, the, and the turmeric and things like that are also valuable as well. But it's to me, you know, and then in this case with the bruises and things, I would definitely look at vitamin C as well and making sure you get good quality vitamin C, whether it be from your food or a supplement, because that's something that can be, you know, depleted as well. Um, can hard water cause rashes? Yeah, if your skin is very sensitive, then hard water can definitely cause rashes because it can irritate the skin. Making sure your skin is supple with good oils will support that. And of course, deep skin-associated lymph drainage has to be there as well. Um, try putting some of that vitamin D right on the skin and see if that doesn't help as well. Um, assuming nails related to skin, my nails are terrible, very thin, peeling, uh, badly bitten. Um, they look badly bitten, but I don't bite them. What do you suggest? Do I have good supplements? I eat organic. Um, um, uh, eat organic primal and paleo diet. Well, the thing about you know the nails is usually it's mineral, mineral support and protein support. Now, as a paleo diet, you're probably getting plenty of protein. Um, and the question I would say is, what's the efficiency of the absorption of your skin? It makes me think, why did you go paleo? Did you feel not good with wheat and grains and things like that? And if you didn't digest those well, then you might not have the efficiency of delivering those minerals to the body the way you should. And just changing the diet didn't really solve the problem. So I would back up and go fix the real problem. And then maybe you can have a little bit more grain in your diet and not have to be so paleo. Just thinking out loud. But that would be a, the way I think is like, you know, if we go into a diet like paleo, why? Was it because I just chose to eat that way because I feel better? or because I felt worse with the other kinds of foods. And that's something we always have to think about. How do I rebuild the digestive and detoxification ability that naturally exists in our digestion and not navigate around poor digestion by taking foods out of the diet? You know, the processed foods in our diet that we've been fed for the last 60 years has caused the breakdown of our digestive system in a major way makes many of us blame wheat and dairy and other hard to digest foods as bad foods, nuts, seeds, grains. Now we're looking down the barrel of saying all grains, all seeds, anything with an anti-nutrient is bad. That's a dangerous you know, way to go. When the real paleo diet, according to Harvard anthropologists, included about 35% of the diet as grain. So it was never just meat and vegetables. And if we end up only eating meat and vegetables because that's all we can digest, and never really fixing the digestive problem, we run the risk of being vulnerable to the environmental pollutants and toxins of which there's 400 billion pounds of chemicals in the American environment every single year, and 72 million of them are cancer causing, and that means we have to digest and detoxify those. And if you can't digest well, you're not gonna detoxify those chemicals, and they're gonna find their way into their fat and your brain and become you know, part of you that you're gonna to have to eventually at some point detoxify, and that can wreak real health hazards down the road. So my concern, the reason why I wrote Eat Wheat, was not as people already eat wheat, it's just that, that, that the concern and the real problem might not be the wheat, it might be a breakdown of digestion that came from years of processed foods that we're still eating that has rendered our, us unable to digest foods that, were once, that we once were able to digest and now we can't. And we're not rebooting digestive strength we're just taking foods out of our diet, which puts us at risk for these toxins, which are not, are not on really anybody's radar, except for well, on my radar. We talk about doing the Colorado cleanse and detoxifying in, in a major way twice a year to shovel out the yuck that's accumulated because we live in such a toxic world. It's a real thing, and our digestion is broken down in a real way. I mean, every one of us, I believe, need to continue to reboot and try to strengthen your digestion. So at the end of the day, you may have the luxury of enjoying a little bit of wheat, a non-processed version of that wheat, once again. 
But that isn't really the purpose of why I wrote Eat Week. It was to help people fix the problem and not just continue to do we so do we do so well in America was just address the symptoms. And that's not good enough. And when you talk about the relation of digestion to the lymph and your skin is an intimate process. Talk about the relation of processed foods to poor digestion, lymphatic congestion in your skin is an intimate relationship, a direct relationship. So those pieces of the puzzle must be addressed as well. Um, so again, once again, please tune in uh, next month on November 14th for my next podcast when I interview Dr. Rob Ifker on sinus survival, how to survive the winter with immunity and support optimal health. This winter is going to be a good one. Thanks for listening. Sorry for our technical difficulties, um, and we'll see you next month. Thanks for listening.